Hello, my soccer universe. Let's do the next review. And now we review the pre uh, the Premier League, the FA Cup, and a little bit of Eredivisie. I uh, have to say that for this one, I didn't see all that much. But uh, you know, in the FA, uh, in the Premier League, with a crazy three-three draw between West Ham and Arsenal, that's one of the highlights in the FA Cup. Uh, Manchester City continues their. Uh, run for a quadruple but now they are running into a Chelsea team and that might actually set up a very exciting game and Leicester outfoxes Manchester United. Uh, and in the Eredivisie we had a crazy top clash where um, PSV has all the chances but Adzet is scoring the goals. And Ajax of course running riot as always when it goes to lower uh, level opposition. So let's look at what was happening. Um, we had on the weekend, we'll start in the Premier League, um, round 29, what's left over except for the Spurs game. We'll come to Spurs in just, just a sec. When Friday evening, Leeds United uh, beats Fulham 2-1. Um, basically, Fulham a little bit stopped in, in the tracks, but they're still very much in the running because Brighton, who has been kind of sort of a relegation candidate, uh, has a big 3-0 win over New Newcastle, who are now in deep trouble. And I've been saying it consistently over the fa last few weeks that I think the last um, relegation spot is between Fulham and Newcastle. Fortunately, two black and white teams, so I'm not very happy about that. Um, game of the weekend in the Premier League definitely was West Ham against Arsenal, where West Ham had a 3-0 win, flying high. Weird jersey match, but I have to say, uh, I'm not sure if Arsenal couldn't have played in the white ones, but I guess the pants would have clashed a little bit with the uh, West Ham jerseys. In any case, it, you know, uh, West Ham and Ar Arsenal, it's always a, a little bit of a weird ma matchup. Here, yellow jerseys. Yellow jerseys would have helped a lot. Uh, Jesse Lingard scores the first one after Michael Antonio uh, assist. Then he himself plays a free kick very, very fast, just two minutes later into Bowen, who makes it 2-0. Uh, and then Michael Antonio heads it seemingly in, but it was got a deflection by Suchek, who was then given the goal. Um, the uh, interesting part is that Arsenal came back and Suchek scored six minutes after he scored on one end. He kind of deflected the shot in from uh, La Cassette. And so at halftime was 3-1 Arsenal. Uh, still a very commanding lead for West Ham, who um, earlier this season were 3-0 down at Spurs and then uh, he equalized within the last 10 minutes. Um, and it went it went this way. Dawson, who already had given the own goal to Manchester United in the win, scores another own goal in the 61st. So two own goals for uh, West Ham. Uh, and it's 3-2 suddenly. And Arsenal really the better team. However, there is a counter-attack that Mikel Antonio, the shot goes onto the post. And then very late on in the 82nd, Lacazette, after Pepe assist, equalizes. And Arsenal gets a 3-3 draw after being 3-0 down. Um, from what I remember the Spurs won, but I think that it happened the second time this season already as well. But I don't recall uh, really now. It's just one of those. 3-0 down, I guess you don't have uh, not much to lose, so you can play for fun. And the other opposition just has to get it done. And then the last Premier League game was uh, Spurs. Rather convincingly winning at Aston Villa 2-0. Um, uh, Carlos Vinicius and Harry Kane with a penalty being the goal scorers there. So with these games uh, we have a few changes, especially mid-table. We have Spurs now moving into sixth and only being three points behind uh, fourth. So maybe they have a chance, but you know, uh, Chelsea seems to be a much strong, stronger team. And if you look at the chances of getting in, in, in the Champions League, 18% is not that high yet, but you know, things might evolve. We have also Arsenal moving up a little bit, Leeds United and on the bottom it's still uh, splitting hairs between uh, Newcastle and Fulham and then there are three more teams that might fall down there, that's Southampton, Burnley and Brighton. So uh, don't think that they will actually get implicated there, they seem a little bit safe. But Newcastle and Fulham, uh, it's between those two pretty, pretty much. Uh, with a few games in hand, here's an adjusted table, which just means that Everton would go ahead of Liverpool in this one. And also Aston Villa, still with, with a game in hand, would go ahead of Arsenal at the current standing if we take just average points per game. 
Uh, not not much else. We can also look uh, projected versus expected, although it gets a little bit weird. I, I have to redo this a little bit because I always take the current expectations. I actually think it would be better if we take the expected points ahead of the season to really kind of judge how well they are doing. But by taking Crystal Palace doing better than expected, Leicester City, of course, and Everton still are one of the more positive surprises there. And as for the expected standings, uh, Spurs now going ahead of West Ham for six. So they have West Ham still with a kind of low rating, um, similar to Leicester, kind of sticking in there. But Leicester looks rather safe in the top four spot, as does Chelsea for the moment. I actually, it's not quite yet in the pro, uh, pro projections, but I wouldn't be totally surprised if Chelsea finishes second. Uh, they are. Not exciting, but very, very sturdy. And this reminds me a little bit of City a little bit earlier this season, just two months ago, when you didn't know where C City going, but they were keeping clean sheets and then suddenly they exploded. I could something like that, Im imagine something like that happening for Chelsea and then watch out in the Champions League and also in the FA Cup for sure. Um, the next fixtures uh, just before the Easter weekend, I mean, the. Big matchup probably is Leicester against Manchester City. The problem is happening at the same time as Leipzig against Bayern. So I'm not sure that seems to be a big, big, big one. But Leicester, I remember, won the first game 5-2 at the Etihad. And in the evening, Arsenal, Liverpool, Liverpool, a big name matchup. But hmm, it's kind of also ran there. Um, if we go for the relegation battle, Aston Villa, Fulham, yeah. And then um, we have Manchester United, no, nah, a new Newcastle United against Spurs. Let's see. How it goes i think it's a little bit weird scheduling also we have to talk of course the fa cup here so a teeny bit more um southampton has no trouble with bournemouth winning uh three nil there then we had uh, um everton against man 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 which is city i mean everton basically and i saw the most of the second half Everton basically was just out there to defend, uh, not trying to uh, concede early. And they hung in, they hung in, they hung, they hung in, but eventually Manchester City ground them down. That's why I'm actually wearing Manchester City, because uh, it was, they are still on the way for the quadruple. Gundogan had heads it in after the ball came off the crawl cross, but it was a, 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 actually a nice save. And then in the end, De Bruyne makes a second and Manchester City is through. As is Chelsea, who uh, with a B team more or more or less rather unexcitedly win against um, Southampton, uh, no, not, not uh, Sheffield United. Sorry, 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 sorry about that. And then uh, the big one was between Leicester and Manchester United. Uh, United, of course, having to play midweek at Milan, and therefore, you know, the lineup a little bit uh, mixed up. Uh, it was the Ian Nacho show who scores two and assists also the second goal by Tielemans. Greenwood got the equalizer, but this was clearly, clearly a Leicester City performance uh, that un uh, un underlined that they are a really good team and maybe the collapse that we all expected is not happening. As for the draw for the semi final, well, it is beautiful. Here it is. It is in some ways be beautiful because every team that played at home is now plays at home as well, and every team that played away from home plays away from home. Uh, the dates have not been fixed yet, but we have Chelsea against Manchester City. That's the big name matchup. And honestly, I know Pep can undo the Champions League, and I can well see this as being this year's Champions League final. So let's put it that way. Uh, but I think uh, this is the big stumbling block for City winning, winning that one. Although don't discount Leicester. Uh, Southampton probably will not have much, shouldn't, will not have much chance against Leicester. And you know, well, let's see. Uh, also interesting, the three of the teams all have circular crests there. We have the final scheduled for the 15th of May at 6.30. So let's see that. And I would imagine that one of the semi-final players had the other one on Sunday, um, but let's see how this will be going. Um, let's move to the Eredivisie, where AZ and PSV played out a remarkable game. Carlsen gives AZ the first goal in the fourth minute, uh, really running uh, and then putting the keeper on the wrong, on the wrong foot, putting it into to the net. And then PSV playing in light blue, which I found weird. Chance after chance after chance after chance. Having a goal by Dumfries, this, this allowed, I think, um, Mario Götze missed a big one as, as well, where you think a player of his quality should actually put them that away. And so in the second half, Kopp Mainas 
with the second shot of RZ on goal, makes it 2 0. Game done and dusted. PSV not coming back. That actually um, could heat up the chase for the second spot in the Eredivisie. Uh, Vitesse only nil against William Dwey and also Feyenoord only a 1 1 against uh, Emmen. Those are kind of uh, surprising results, I have to say. Ajax, though, uh, no problem. They are 5 0 against Den Haag. Uh, as we'll see, enough to put Den Haag into last place. Uh, and if I look at the goal scores, Rensch, Brobe, Alvarez, uh, it was not necessarily the first squad that was playing there. Tad, 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 to boot, so uh, pretty, pretty impressive stuff there. As, as I said, AZ now level on points with PSV, so that race for the second spot, which will go into the will mean uh, Champions League playoff, is still very much open. And then we have all this play for the remaining uh, European spots on the bottom. I think I just want to say Willem Dwey, who finished fifth, I think, last, last season, now get out of the relegation um, uh, spot. Uh, Venlo moving in there, you know. You know, they lost big uh, this season once. Uh, and so in the expected standings, it seems pretty much set. I mean, there's a little bit fuzziness towards, towards the middle, but we have Ajax, very clear, the champion, champions. PSV and AZ going for second and third. Uh, Vitesse and Feyenoord for uh, fourth and fifth. Utrecht and Groningen also sees six and seven. So I, it seems like Twente might not make it into this playoff. And then on the bottom, Eminent and Haag seem to be uh, done. And then it's basically who will go into the last promotion relegation spot. In the next round, uh, we don't really have a big game in there. We have AZ playing at Willem Dwey, maybe 20 Vitesse, but you know, uh, for uh, it is more like for people who know about Dutch soccer so, 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 and don't necessarily care only for the top teams. Uh, Fiena plays against Sittard, uh, as AZ at Willem Dwey, PSV against Heracles, and Herrenveen against Ajax at least has a little bit of some tradition behind that. Well, that was it from me for the last weekend in England and in the Netherlands. I actually will probably do a little video on the Bene League that is proposed, which I, spoiler, <laughs> I actually think it's a good idea and I wanted that I spin that idea further, but I don't know when exactly I will be able to get to that, but I definitely want to do a video about that. Um, the Bene League def definitely wants to join Belgium and the Dutch League into a new tall topic to a kind of challenge or at least a bit get uh, other leagues a little bit closer to uh, the top four, maybe the top five leagues. And for that, I think it's a good idea. In any case, let me know your thoughts on the games that I've been talking about or the, comp the competitions. Also, if you are already thoughts on the Bene League, I would be uh, quite interested. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing and clicking the little bell icon so that you get updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe. With that, have a wonderful day. Bye.